In today's video, I make a shopping basket, clean brush with a tweezer, as well I draw contours with a pencil, I place one piece of a puzzle on the surface, and lastly, I use a black sorcerer. Hello fellow modelers, it has been some time since my last modern plane, or tank. Behold the German Leopard 2. I primarily bought the kit because I was astonished by the details and design. The kit does not have a lot of parts if you consider the size of the box, there is only one sprue. You can choose from A5 or A6 versions. Also there are options for Leopard during practice service. Good is to mark in the manual which version you choose and all the other optional parts. Look at the soft weld texture or anti-slip surface. The tongue tracks are also nice and sharp. I only see a subtle problem with the pronounced mode line on the complex gun barrel. But the rest is lovely. So the gun barrel. I am carefully removing the excess mold runner and mold line with a sandpaper. Try not to flatten the raised details or round shapes. The mold line intervenes in detail around fume extractor, however I can comfortably restore lines with the razor saw. I like gluing parts with a super thin glue, however fellow modelers from a local modeling club advise me that extra thin glue from Tamiya is better, because it has a thinner brush. Consequently, you can apply it more precisely. However, that is only one advantage and the clues are similar. The undercarriage does not fit at all. Ah, there are some crazy large pins. Exterminate them all. Ah, that was the issue. I am not sure why this side armor is movable. It should be as a cover for infantry, but it doesn't make too much sense for modern warfare. In my opinion the better is Merkava with a space inside of the tank for infantry or any IAV. These tiny parts are smoke grenade launchers. It was hard not to lose them. I glue small parts with a super glue. If you apply super glue on the walks or any not stick paper, it will stay fresh for a few hours. For example, it proved to me recently a residual paper from taping. On the side of the turret are baskets for supplies. You must shape and measure this small mesh according to plastic part. If you don't have some experience with metal parts, this could be a tricky. But I hope you will handle that. Good practice is to drill out the hole for light when it's still in the sprue. Fenders and armor cover stun tracks, so they are hardly visible. In any case, if you are painstaking, you can remove soft ejector pin marks. I am sticking tracks to sell adhesive poster gum. The handling meanwhile painting is more comfortable. I chose, according to photos, this rust orange red shade. Also, you can notice that each link has a rubber pads. I am painting all of them with the paintbrush and Revel Aqua rubber shade. A few minutes later, the work is done. I have been making models for a few years, and I realized that I need only basic tools and colors. For example, I use this enamel buff, dark brown and black shades for the whole weathering. I only diluted it with the enamel thinner and splashed it on the surface. I do not want this effect on the rubber pads, so enamel thinner nicely removes it. And small steel abrasion with a metal powder pigment. The surface has very soft details, therefore I am trying to spray thin layers. I am not too fond of the NATO camouflage because of the masking. Also it is tricky to select correct shade because in 72 scale you cannot use them directly from the bottle. The problem is that the same paint on the real machine cannot be used on the model. If you make it smaller, then optically the color looks darker. So with any scale down, you need to change the shade. I already told you that gears would be hidden, so at least some weathering with the splatters.
It is always easier to assemble the whole model and then paint it. If you are making it by sections, then you must use super glue. Ordinary glue doesn't work correctly on painted parts. I wanted to use this masking party and cover all green stains, but I do not have so much patience. However, easier solution is to scan the manual marking and rescale it to one to one with the model size, or by prepared mask for a kit. The contours are not highly visible, so outline them with the pencil. It looks like a puzzle, because it is, so I am cutting out the pieces. Precise scissors are necessary. So, how to stick the paper on the model? Simply use a small amount of a poster gum. The rest of the paper could help to find the precise position and orientation. Believe me, you really do not want to mask these crazy shapes in this scale. The second layer is NATO brown. Then I mask the brown areas and spray over final color NATO black. Some poster gum usually stay on the surface. Do not try to remove it with any tool. Simply make a small ball from the gum and the rest will stick to it. The paint job is horrible, but at least I have the basic shapes of the camouflage. I think that the model is ruined and I can start again. Or try to save it with the mighty paintbrush. I use acrylic paints and highly dilute it, otherwise you can see brush marks. I decided to use a brighter shade, because primarily the brown is too dark. I fix all with a clear varnish and apply decals. Luckily, there are only a few of them. You can decide if you want anti-slip parts in camouflage paint or after repairs in black. I found a few pictures. I think the black nicely optically breaks the surface and also red bolts on wheels. It's time for more weathering, so I am unifying the model with a matte varnish. First, I want to make the whole model dusty, and for this is good enamel paint. It will change the entire shade of the colors, so you must count on it. I am making leaks and blurring them with an enamel thinner. This way you can nicely make some armor plates lighter and with the more accumulated dust than others. I am using the same paint also for the wash, I only added more thinner. Consequently the wash nicely spreads into panel lines and around details. You can achieve more vital dust shade if you apply less diluted paint. You can notice that I am making on the flat areas dust more pronounced than on the sloping surface. Here you can nicely see how the shade changed. Consequently the chassis looks too bright against the turret. But that is only optical illusion. At least I hope. So more dust on the turret.
now it looks same and more uniform. It remains to paint some shading with a darker rust shade and some scratches. I added for rougher texture effect small amount of a dry pigment. It nicely imitates accumulated mud. Ok, the scratches. It doesn't matter which paint you will use, but I like acrylics because they dry fast. And more shading and dirt with the oil paints. The optical sides are tricky to paint, therefore I do not paint them and rather use luminescence film for nails. I purchased the whole set from eBay for a few dollars. I use a film with a gold, green and pink effect. I accidentally filled thin mesh with a masking party. So the easy solution now is to cover the whole basket with the camouflage tarpaulin. I use Teflon plumbing tape which is nicely elastic and thin. I like the moment when you think that the model is ruined and few hours later it becomes one of my favorite finished AV models. Ok not really, because I recently made another crazy what if mounts found dry model, which is my favorite. Nevertheless, I can already told you that you can be looking forward to large 4 engine bomber. Patreons already know. Ok, that is all. Thank you for watching and see you next time.